junior church, but I, is there any junior church people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's one. <laughs> I hope you're able to uh, listen to the words and um, really that encourage you because who is our confidence? God. God's our confidence, not this world, not the people around us, not, it's God is our confidence. And God helps us to be faithful to others. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. It's, uh, it's fun to see what God is doing in a lot of people's hearts and minds and lives. It's uh, fun to see people stepping out on faith and just going, okay, okay, God, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to do this. And uh, I just hope that you're praying for one another, you're encouraging one another, because God is working, even when we can't see it. Amen. God is there. He never leads us. Um, last week, we talked about GBC. I asked this question, GBC, do you believe that God is in our church? Do you believe that? Is God working in your lives? Are you sure? I, I, I hear Tim and Lily. You know, God's working in your guys' lives too. It's everybody. God is working in your life. And God is working in this church. He's leading our church. Um, then I want to ask you, if you really believe that God is working, why are we timid about God? Why are we timid about our church? Why are we timid? about sharing and caring and doing and volunteering and serving one another. Because when God is leading, that gets excited. We should be excited. God has called us to be a church on a light on the hill. We're on a hill in Grants Pass. People can see us from the highway. Are we a good light or a bad light? We should be that light on the hill. That's our goal. We should be. That's why we have 2510 on the wall. That's why we should be fellowshipping, enjoying one another, telling other people about what God is doing at our church. We should start inviting people. We should start sharing the gospel with people. We should start fellowshipping with one another. September started, folks. Labor Day tomorrow. Then everybody starts up school, and our school's already started. New schedules are starting. We're getting a rhythm. Let's make a rhythm of getting to know one another. Let's invite each other over. Let's, let's play games. Let's start sharing a meal together. And you know what? You guys can invite some of the young people to your house. You know? They're not, they don't eat you all out of house and home. <laughs> just a little bit. All right? Have an answer to why you go to GBC. Do you have an answer? Can you answer that, why you come here? God has given us a calling, all of us a calling. And that's to be his ambassadors here on this earth. Now we have to be praying, well, okay, how, when, what, who, where, how do you want me to be that ambassador? All these things, when we start praying who, what, when, where, how, that's so we can have an answer for people. That's when we start making meals for people. That's when we start visiting with people. That's when we start talking to our neighbor about God, talking to our neighbor about our church. We cannot just sit on our hands and expect someone else to do it. Well, John, we pay you to do that. No, that's not biblical. You pay me to help you guys to be encouraged to do the work. I'm the cheerleader. I'm the coach. I'm the guy that's saying, yes, you can do this. But John, it's uncomfortable. I know. But God's with you. Where's your confidence? In yourself or in God? Let's go. God's got you. What are you waiting for? And I ended with this. Trust God when he calls you to do something. When God calls you to do something, is he going to go with you to do it? I was going to go, so, oh, I called you somewhere. Sorry, you're on your own. No, when God calls you somewhere, he's going to go with you. And even if it's out of your comfort zone. The question is, will you step out with God? 
That was the ending of last sermon, okay? So now we got the new sermon coming up here. But let's pray. My Father, my God, I just thank you for the book of Nehemiah. I thank you that we're able to study it. I thank you that we have a series that we can go through and see how you work through Nehemiah and how applicable it is to us, how your timeless word is very timely. Lord, may you just guide my speech. May your words be in my mouth. And may you open our hearts and our minds to all wisdom and understanding from your word. Guide us. Give us truth. Help us understand who you are and what you want from this sermon for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you, have, if you don't know, we're in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was an example of a great leadership book in the Bible. It's awesome. It really guides and directs and really shows you how to follow God, God when you're in a position of leadership. And we establish that we're all leaders in some way, shape, or form. Nehemiah is appointed for work that's going to happen. And last week, God, in the, in the place we study, the king granted all of Nehemiah's requests. And why was that? Because the mighty hand of God was with Nehemiah. My question to you guys, is God with you? Yes. God's with you. Why are we timid? Our God is the God of miracles. Do you believe that? Does God work miracles in our lives? Yeah. Even when we mess up? Yeah. Even when we fail? Yeah. Guess what? We're going to fail all the time. Yeah. And God loves us all the time and helps us to recover, to move forward. God's hand is on Nehemiah's life. And I want to tell you, God's hand is on your life. I want to talk to you as parents. How many of you, as dads and moms, when your little kid reaches up and grabs your hand, what, what's that feeling? Is that a good feeling? It's like your kid is reaching out and saying, I love you. I need security. I need guidance. Does your hand protect parents? Does it provide? Does it direct? Does it bless your child? That's, that's when I grab my hand, my, my kid's hand. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm here. I got you. I'm here with you. Uh, I was in, um, I, don't, I don't remember what store it was, but I was with Logan. I think it was in uh, Circle K, or formerly Circle K. I don't, I'm always going to know it as Circle K. Anyway, I was down there, and uh, uh, Logan, uh, Logan and I, we, we put our arms around another. You know, we talk. You know, we're very affectionate, you know, towards one another. And uh, at, he was doing something. I walked out, and one of the guys said, I just love the way you interact with your son. I love the way that you show your love for one another. That's what we do when we hold our kids' hands, when we hold our wives' or our husbands' hands. We, put, we can feel like everything is going to work out. Even if it doesn't, we're okay because we have our mom and dad with us. Right? I mean, do you remember that? I know some of us, it's been a long time. <laughs> but do you remember that confidence? It's okay. Mom and dad have me. Even if everything's falling apart, they're here. When something wonderful, miraculous, supernatural happens in your life, who do you give credit to? God. I hope so. Because a lot of people, they say, oh, yeah, I did this. I got that promotion. Or do you give credit to, you know, look, I have a good brain. That's why I got this. <laughs> or, you know, my job, my wife. I, you know, do you give credit to God? Amen. God should always get the glory. And that's what happened with Nehemiah. When he got all these requests, it was because the mighty hand of God was upon me. Now, reading what happened to Nehemiah should encourage us about God's blessing in our lives. It should encourage us to follow God. Because remember that First sermon, the second sermon, when Nehemiah was standing before the king and the king said, what's the matter? I guess it was last week. You know, what's, what's the matter, Nehemiah? Remember what his emotions were? He was terrified because he didn't know what was going to happen, if he was going to die or not. But he stepped out in faith and said, I'm going all in with God. If I lose my life, I lose my life. And God turned around into an awesome blessing. The point is, God's got this. He's got your life. He's got your home. He's got your family. He's got your finances. 
He's got the culture, Amen. and he's got the culture of your family. So if you have your Bibles, open it up to Nehemiah. It's in the Old Testament. If you don't, don't worry, it's on the screen. Chapter 2 and starting verse 9, and it says this. When I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letter to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Amorite officials heard of my arrival, Ammonite, excuse me, Ammonite officials heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. The key here, the thing you have to know is, Nehemiah shows up with power and authority and leadership. This is not a new thing. Often officials came, and, and this guy's coming, and this guy's in charge, and he's going to move things. He's gonna, things are going to happen. But here's the question. Is it going to be good or for bad? Is this guy a good guy for us or a bad guy for us? How is he going to move? Is he going to be just like everyone else? Kind of like, don't rock the boat. Everything's going fine. We're not in war or anything. We're just, you know, we're making it. Don't let things change. They're questioning. We're surviving. We're not thriving, but we're surviving. I hope he doesn't ups upset the apple cart. But here's this guy. He shows up with an army. Isn't that cool? What's going to happen? He asked for letters of protection. The king gave him an army to protect him. Not just letters, but an army. Sometimes you have to realize that when you follow God, there's going to be opposition. Amen. There's going to be people, things, the enemy is going to be against you. And we're going to meet here two out of the three unholy trinity that we're going to see in Nehemiah. And these guys are going to give Nehemiah problems throughout the rest of the book. These guys do not want anything good for the people of Israel. Do you ever notice that people don't want anything good for God's church? Do you ever notice that? Do you ever notice how people react to you when you say you're a Christian? Do they call you names? You're a bigot. You don't love they call all these things against us. These guys don't want anything good to happen to Israel. They keep them in shame. They want them discouraged. They don't let God's prophecies come true. They don't want them to come true. Remember that Jerusalem is where the Messiah is supposed to do a lot of cool things. Where Christ, Jesus, is coming. And if you don't have a safe city or you don't even have Jerusalem, can the prophecies come true? No. No. Because God's word is always true. And it said, in this city, these things are going to happen. So the enemy is like, no, we don't want anything good to happen. So these two guys are the faces of organized opposition the entire life and ministry of Nehemiah. This is the beginning of open spiritual warfare. Here's the thing. God builds, the enemy destroys. We advance the cause of God, and the enemy tries to stop that advance. God creates, and the enemy counterfeits. GBC, this is what's happening right now, right here, right now. The enemy does not want us to go forward. Does not want us to advance. The enemy is saying, oh, just go back to the way it was. You were fine. You were surviving. I'm going to tell you right now, no way. We want to go forward. We want to advance. God is our leader, and we're going to go with him. Amen. God is our leader, and we're going to go with him. Amen. All right. This side, yes. This side, we're still working on. Okay? All right. Enemies are going to oppose Nehemiah from now on. The people of Israel are going to be attacked because of Nehemiah. Do you realize that the enemy attacks anyone and everyone when the leadership is training to follow God? Amen. When the leadership is training to follow God, put him first, the enemy goes, let's attack everyone. 
not just the leaders, everyone. Let's disrupt everything so that people will say, hey, we want new leadership. Change is bad. Let's go back to the way it was. You're disrupting the flow. I want to say this. This is, this is so true for us. Healthy things grow and growing things change. Amen. Is that true? Farmers, people that plant gardens, right? If it's not growing, you're saying, what's the health of it, right? Is that what you're saying? Is that, is that true? Sometimes you have to prune it and cut it, but healthy things grow and growing things change. People, followers of Jesus, need to have thicker skin. Because we're going to be attacked. We're going to be attacked. The people of Israel needed to be ready for these attacks that were coming. GBC, we need to be ready for the attacks that are coming. Followers of Jesus need to have confidence in their calling from who? God. God. We just we sang that song, that song. Confidence in God. We're confident in his calling. We're confident in his direction. Nehemiah know, knew what he needed to do. That gave him confidence because God called him to rebuild the wall. So he was ready. It didn't matter what opposition was coming. He says, this is what God's called me to do. I'm going to do this until he takes me away. It gave him confidence. It gave him courage. It gave him stamina. GBC, we need to have confidence in what Jesus is calling us to do. Amen. We need to follow Jesus, not our finances. Amen. We need to follow the Holy Spirit, not just what's convenient or safe. We need to follow God the Father, not our own plans. Amen. We always put our plans and then say, invite God to bless our plans instead of following his plan and ask God to help us follow him. When God calls you to do something, the calling is going to be tested and opposed. Amen. It's going to happen. Tested and opposed. That is why I like to call it training. Training to do your calling. Okay? Training is an advancing when you even are tested, you fail, or you're opposed. You're still training. You're still advancing towards what God is wanting you to do. And here's the thing, you guys. A test is going to produce a testimony. A test is going to produce a testimony. We're reading the book of Nehemiah, and that is Nehemiah's testimony on what's happening. You can't have a testimony without a test. Where does your confidence to endure the test come from? You're calling from God. God has a calling on your life. You are to be, what, ambassadors for Christ. Is God going to help you perform that? He will even if it's uncomfortable. Because you know who called you to that? God did. That is how you persevere, is because your confidence in what God has called you to do. We learn, we don't give up. We train harder, we stay true to the calling. We keep going to what God is wanting in our life. Um, I want to ask you, uh, marriage... God calls you to be married. Let me ask you, it, it, is there a test in marriages? <laughs> are there tests in marriages? There are. If you're not married, don't worry, you'll learn it. But when you're called to be married, when you get together to be married, there's vows and things that you make towards your wife and your husband. And that gets tested. Because the enemy, your flesh, and circumstances all trying to divert you from what God's plan was for the marriage. And here's the thing. We can have confidence in our marriage because we have confidence in God. Amen. God can help us to have confidence in our marriage because we're following God and serving our spouse. Not, oh, I'm just worshiping my spouse and God's on the side. That's not going to work.
who does this calling help us? What does this calling help us do? It helps us eliminate laziness. When God gives us calling, we, don't, we can't be lazy when he calls us. And he's called us all to be witnesses for him. I want to ask you, how is your witnessing going? When is the last time you talked to somebody that didn't know Jesus? It helps us overcome fear. Because if God's called you to do something, even if you die, God's called you to do that. And then you show up in heaven and, oh, rats, you get to spend eternity in paradise. A lot of us, you know, remember, this is not the end all. Heaven's the end all. Jesus is the end all. Your courage comes from his calling on your life. It keeps you from wasting your life. Amen. You know, the older I get, the more I think, like, okay, what really has my life been about? You know? And there's really, I, I was listening to uh, a, a famous actor, he's, become a philosopher or something, I don't know. He, he, just, said, he just said, you know, um, how many of you know your grandfather's grandfather's first name? Not too many, right? It's gone. History, it, it's gone. So all these things that happen in your life that you go through, how long is it going to last? Maybe two, three generations? How long are the things that you're doing for eternity going to last? So the things we do for God, for heaven, for the future, are going to last forever. The things we're doing right now, how many of you can remember exactly how much you were making 20 years ago? How many of you can remember every detail about that year? How many of you can, it, it just goes away. Nehemiah has a calling from God. Did Nehemiah know if he was going to succeed or not? He didn't know. He had confidence in God that he called him to do this, but he wasn't sure if it was going to happen, but he was going to try everything he could do to make it happen with God, God leading the way. In Nehemiah 2, verse 11, it says this. So this is Nehemiah. So I arrived in Jerusalem. Three days after he arrived, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. Whose plans? We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. After dark, I went out through the valley gate, past the jackal's gate, and over the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burned gates. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. So though it was still dark, I went up to the Kidron Valley instead, inspected the wall before I turned back and entered again at the valley gate. The city officials did not know I had been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not yet spoken to the Jewish leaders, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or anyone else in my administration. If you really want to know how a culture is doing, how a city is doing, how a community is doing, Go out at night. Amen. You're going to see things about what's happening. And Nehemiah goes out around the wall to see, to confront the brutal facts of what his calling was. He needs to get the facts straight before he can act and lead. Listen to this. If you're a good leader, or if you're leading a good team of people, you'll make a bad decision with the wrong information. You hear me? You'll make a bad decision with the wrong information. A good leader needs the right information to come to a, a good decision. So you just don't hear something and come to a conclusion. You make sure to find the reality and then make a plan. How many of you just react when you hear something? Nobody? OK. Yeah. Sometimes we get facts wrong. I mean, have you ever played that? that phone tag thing, that phone, you know, around. And you ever get to the last person, and what is that? What is that? And the phone message, you know, you pass it around ear to ear. What is it? Telephone. telephone. Call, call the telephone. And the last person that says it, is it usually the same that started out? Yes. <laughs> it's like way, sometimes it's, it's like, where did that come from? A lot of times we get information that is not all true. 
but we react to it like, that's fact. Now I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> no, we need, we don't just hear and come to a conclusion. You make sure that it's reality, it's right. You have all the facts. Remember when I first came here, um, asking questions with respectful dialogue and love? Do some of you remember that? I, I preached that all the time when I first came. We're going to have love with respectful dialogue and asking questions and clarifying questions. And the, the awesome thing is, you know, I preached that all the time, and then I failed to do it once. <laughs> and it blew up in my face. <sighs> you know, that's why we're training, right? We're training, OK? But you need to ask clarifying questions. Nehemiah needed to do some private research before he could initiate his plan, initiate the plan. And here's the thing, to be a good leader, you need to follow God. Nehemiah is confident that he's following God. Nehemiah is so confident that he invites others to follow him as he follows God. And that's what we're going to see in verse 17. Verse 17 and 18, it says this, But now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been upon me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Nehemiah calls every Jewish leader present to remove the reproach against God, Jehovah. In that time period, in that culture, people equated God's strength, their God's strength, with the house that they were in, the God was in. Were... And so Jerusalem, that's where Jehovah, God, the God we serve, was supposed to be residing. And the city was destroyed. So the culture, everybody looked down and said, oh, your God's not very strong. Your God's not all powerful. Jerusalem has been in ruins for 141 years. The neighbors of Israel are saying, our God is bigger than your God. Look at our city. It has a wall. It's a smear against Jehovah. And that's what really bothered Nehemiah. Nehemiah says, look, God has provided a way for us to rebuild it. So he tells them how God is already working, already calling, already blessing a testimony how God gave grace before the king. He shows up with an army, he shows up with timber, lumber. He's ready to rebuild. Come on, guys, let's rebuild. Look at God's already working. God's in this. A testimony of how God is working. Remember that this was against tradition. This was against precedence. This king knew about the history of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the center of rebellion over and over and over again. That's why Babylon decided to wipe it out. Because the people of Israel, the people of Jerusalem said, well, God's on our side. Who can stand against us while we just serve other gods? Why we just do our own thing. We don't follow God, but he's our God. This is his city. He'll never let it destroyed. How many of you say, well, I'm saved, I'm good, God's for me, I can just do whatever I want, God is never going to hurt me or never allow bad things to happen to me because I'm God's child. And so I can do whatever I want, but I'm going to heaven so I can do whatever I want. You know how we look back at Jerusalem and, and Israel and say, what, they're so stupid. The longer, the older I get, I go, John, you are Israel. How many times have God blessed us and done different things, and yet we still do our own thing? We don't recognize him. We don't praise him. We don't say, God is moving. Here it is. When God is for us, who can be against us? When God is for us, who can be against us? Do you feel that way? Is God for us here at GBC? Is he? Yes. Young people, God is for you. Who can be against you? We're going to wake that group up sometime. God is for you. Are we still acting like there's reproach on our congregation? 
Are we still acting like, oh yeah, back in the day, and now we just let things go, and now we're just starting to get things set, but I don't know if we'll ever be back the way we are. I don't ever want to be the back the way we were. I want to go where God is leading us now. Yeah, God blessed in the past. And for whatever reason, we had problems. But now God is blessing again. This is Nehemiah. Come on, let's go. Are we ready to rebuild the wall or not? Come on. People, God is moving. Let's join him. Let's move with him. God has brought us through a lot. The enemy is raging against us a lot. The world is saying that our God is better than your God, GBC. No, GBC, our God is bigger than any other so-called God. Let's start building our church. Let's start doing that 2510. It's September 1st. Let's start being new. This month, let's invite two other people, groups, to your house or out for coffee or go play pickleball. That young people right there would love to play pickleball with you. If you don't know how to play, they'll teach you. All right? You can coffee. You can, there, there's things you can do with people. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. Just playing a game night. Do you know how awesome it is just to have some people over and play games? And you don't have to be good at them. You just, you're there to have a good time with each other. Get to know one another. Dare I say that somebody pay for a babysitter so those two could go out on a date? What? I can do that? Yes. Maybe even you could babysit. Just be prepared. There's four of them. But here, uh, when I say this, let me warn you guys, okay? There's a warning. When we move, there's going to be counter moves. Okay? There's going to be counter moves. The enemy will start opposing us at full force. If you're trying to be a blessing to someone, guess what? The enemy is going to come down. Don't bless them. Just be selfish. Go back to the way it was. He doesn't want to see us on fire for God. He doesn't want to see us excited for God. He doesn't want to see GBC doing things for God. People, if God is for us, who can be against us? We will win in the end no matter what. So let's go. And see, here's the thing. When we're going forward, just like Nehemiah, we're going to have opposition. And this is what we see in verse 19 and 20. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Gesim, the Arab, heard of our plan, they scoffed contemptuously. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king? They asked. I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. Nehemiah says, go, confronts the enemy right off the bat. Nehemiah, negative narrative always follows God's leading. Negative narrative always follows God's leading. In modern language, this is fake news. This is a fake report. This is a lie. All three of the unholy trinity start promoting disinformation. The two, two of the enemies recruit a third guy and say, come on, let's make this alliance and go after these guys. These three guys are literally surrounding all sides of Israel. They are the neighbors of Israel. Look at this. Map. Sambalot's up on top, Tobiah's in the east, and Gesson's on the south. Jerusalem is way up there by T. I had a pointer. We forgot. Dan and I forgot. The pointer, right by the T. Right to the, the right of, the left of T. Right to the left of T is Jerusalem. But the, right Tobiah. Did I say, yeah, Tobiah. Just of Tobiah. Left of Tobiah on T. See Jerusalem up there? Can you see it? Yeah, okay, there you go. Somebody pointed out to her. There we go. Okay, good. Here's the thing. Israel is surrounded by enemies. And they're wanting to attack him. Take, take down Jerusalem. Don't. You can't do this. This is not the norm. We want it to stay the same. 
This is a familiar story throughout history. That's why the timeless word of God is so timely. Jesus is on the scene. There's a group of people called the Pharisees that are constantly trying to trap, stop Jesus from doing stuff. They're taking the truth and twisting it to serve their purpose. The enemies of God want the people of God to be loyal to the government, not to God. What do I mean by that? Because the government hates God because they think they are God. So the government's suppression and stops religious freedom so that people will follow them, not God. People are just trying to worship and have freedom and faith and family. And, the, and these three guys are saying, leave the government as is. Don't do that. The unholy trinity wants nothing good for Israel, so they oppose Nehemiah. And they ask this question, are you rebelling? That's dangerous words in those times, especially for Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was destroyed because they always rebelled. Nehemiah, are you setting yourself up as king? Are you going to try to just be, lead to insurrection? Are you doing this? Listen, I, I have something for you. If you are a leader, remember this saying. If you are going to call the shots, you are going to take the shots. Amen. Nehemiah is a leader. And here's the thing. Nehemiah, are you leading people away from the government, away from the true God? That is the government. The negative narrative, the fake news, the propaganda, kind of stirring up fear. Come on, guys, don't follow this guy. You're treasonous. You're criminal. You're underhanded. You're no good. Nehemiah's response is awesome. It's in humility. It's in faith of God. And it's in truth. And he said, the God of heaven will help us succeed. Amen. Who's going to help them succeed? I want to ask you, when we're thinking about this 2, 5, 10, these things, are, will we succeed if we do those things? Only if God's with us. And God's with us. If God's for us, who can be against us? Are you seeing a theme here, you guys? If God is not in it, it's going to fail. But GBC, this is one of the most important things that we have. If God is not in it, it's going to fail. So that's why we seek God. And we ask God to lead. Without God, we're nothing. We can accomplish nothing for eternity without God. We need God in our lives. Nehemiah says, we are his servants. When a leader says that it's not up to me, it's up to God, that is humility. That is humility. Everyone, he puts everyone in the same boat. I can't do anything without God's help. You can't do anything without God's help. You can't make an impact without God's help. Good leaders lead in humility, but also people that are being led by leaders need to have humility as well. What do I mean by that? We just installed elders into our church not too long ago. And this can be scary because those men need to be following and leading righteously. Finding God's will for this life, for our lives, for this church. They should be actively praying and seeking God's will. And then when they lead, that requires you guys to be humble and let them lead. Is that scary? It can be. It can be scary because those men need to be responsible and faithful to God, not to their own ego or their own selves. It can, be hard to be, it can be hard to be a leader. It can be hard to be led. That is why we need God to be the ultimate leader. Because if God's leading, we can have confidence in God. And then Nehemiah goes off. You have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. Nehemiah, puts in tr or put, Nehemiah in truth puts them in their place. I think that needs to happen again. You may be leaders, but God has put these leaders in place. You guys may have influenced Jerusalem, but you guys are no longer doing that because we're following God, and God is our ultimate leader. Amen. So you guys need to go away because God hasn't called you here. 
I have people trying to tell me how to lead here that not, are not part of this church. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're not even here. It's different if they were giving advice and asking and saying, how, how's the Lord leading in your life? How can, can I pray for you? But they say, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you have to do this, and you have to. Nehemiah is saying, you're no longer leaders here, so stay away. God is our leader. We're following God. So you guys, application here. GBC, are you ready to get into the battle for people's souls? People's souls, they're going to spend eternity away from God. Think about that. The rope, you know, this little section here, we're worried about what they're going to think during this little section. What are they going to think during all of eternity? Now, there's a right and a wrong way of sharing that. But God, Jesus, the question is all about Jesus. We have some people that they say, hey, we serve the same God, but I don't believe in Jesus. No, then you don't serve the same God. Because what did Jesus say? If you reject me, you reject God. Because Jesus is God. GBC, are you ready to get into the battle for your family's culture? Are you ready to do what DJ said before? I'm not taking electronics with my boys. They're not going to have any screen time when we go out. And the boys are like, what? GBC, are you ready to battle for God's reputation for this church, in this church? Amen. We are no longer like that. We are now servants of God. We are now following God wholeheartedly, and we have leadership in place to follow God. We are doing it here and now. Amen. Regardless of whatever happened in the past, now we choose God. That's Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua. As for me and my house, what? We will serve the Lord now. Make up your mind. Make up your choice. GBC, are you ready to follow God, and are you ready to face the opposition that's going to be coming? Because you will be opposed while you're following God. So here's the thing. The first weapon we have in this is prayer. Prayer. Prayer is the first and main weapon for this battle that's happening. Are you praying for people's souls? in this community, your neighbor, your family? Are you praying for your family? I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a lot of pressures in the world going after our kids. There's a lot of things saying, follow us, don't follow God. That's outdated. Are you praying for this church? Lord, don't let the enemy in here. Lord. Keep my flesh at bay. Pray for the leaders. Lord, help the leaders find your will for this church. The second one is get off the bench and enter the battle. For you that aren't in sports, that means to play the game. Don't just sit on the sideline and say, yeah, I'm good. I'll go to practice, but I'm not going to actually engage in actual competition. Get off the bench and enter the game. How many of us, too many people, say, let the other person do it? Oh, we just installed elders. They can do it now. It's their problem. No, it's our problem. We need to be praying. No, we don't let other people do it. We say, God, what do you want me to do? When you say, let other people do it, that's the enemy talking. That's not God talking. That's the enemy saying, just don't worry about it. You're fine. Leave it as is. God has called you to be an ambassador. God has called you to have fellowship in this church. God has called you to have fellowship with his son. God has called you to do these things. And 2, 5, 10 are there to help you. Do, do, do I dare say it? Do it monthly? Tell five different people monthly about Jesus Christ. Invite 10 different people to church monthly. Invite two different groups to your house monthly. Third thing. Encourage others who are struggling from all the opposition. 
I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a lot of people in our congregation struggling with different circumstances and things going on around them. Do you encourage them? We should and can depend on each other. Amen. Let's be an encouraging, uplifting, motivating one another to good works. Come on, people, we can make a huge difference, not only in this community, not only in this church, but in our families. People's souls, your family, the culture's family, this church. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Nehemiah was given a calling. We're given a calling to become closer to one another and share the love of Christ to others. Are you ready? Are you going to join me? Please join me. My Father, my God, I just thank you for this lesson. I thank you how it motivated me. Lord, I just pray that it, that it motivates all, all of us, that we get excited about what you're doing. And Lord, help us not to stay on the sidelines. Help us to get off the bench and get in the game. Help us to follow you and be true to the calling you've given us. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you what you've done today. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.